Hello everyone. It's, well it's actually Wednesday today. Or Wednesday. It's August 20th. I spent yesterday actually just trying to get this set up so that I could record this the way I wanted to. And in today's episode, what I'm going to try to do is complete what I started, well, I guess over three years ago, and that is a look at learning to read music. And the topic today, of course, is rhythm. And I'm actually just going to turn this off. Less distraction. All right. So in the other episode, um, I talked about finding, you know, distinguishing these little markings on the, on the sheet, on the page music, into strings, learning, you know, this means an E and that is that string over there. Okay, great. And how it's just, you know, one kind of up, one step at a time. And to me, it all makes such logical sense. It's really, we're dealing in absolutes. It's great on the harp because, you know, on some instruments, say on the violin, there would be multiple ways you could play, get this sound, this B. And it also it would change depending on whether it's a flat or a sharp or a natural. On the harp, if you're playing this B, you're always playing the same string, right? So it's great. It's just, it's, it's so logical. It makes so much sense. Um, rhythm, Rhythm does not deal in absolutes. Rhythm is all about the relationships between between notes. In other words, it's telling us how long a note should last, but it never tells us how long a note should last in time. It only tells us how long a note should last in relationship to the other notes. So a little more nebulous. Um, I've tried to record this video a couple of times and haven't been happy with it, so hopefully this will make sense. I'm going to start by introducing kind of the, the characters in our little adventure. So uh, let me actually bring the screen up again. When when we talked about finding the notes on the staff, and you know this is the staff of course, and how they relate to the strings and the harp, we were concerned with where they were positioned. But with rhythm, what we're concerned with is how they look. So this is a whole note. It's the circle or, or ellipse, I guess, and it's hollow. It's white inside. If we add a stem to it, it's a half note. If we make this little, little uh, ellipse black, if we fill it in, it's a quarter note. If we give it a tail, so it's, you know, at this point they're all going to be black in the middle. If we give a little tail, it's an eighth note. Two tails, sixteenth, two tails, thirty second four tails, 64th, 128th, etc. You'll notice I say or here. Well, that's because sometimes instead of a tail, they'll have a beam. And let me show you an example. Um, actually, let me just give you... So here's an eighth note by itself, right? And it's got this little tail. Might be pointing up, might be pointing down, doesn't really matter. It's an eighth note. But if we start to get several of them one after another, they'll have a beam. This means the same thing. 16th note, right? Get these beams, 32nd note, lots of beams. But whether it's a tail or it's a beam, it's the same thing. It's just letting us know the note value. Um, so what does that mean? What, what we're like, well, okay, great, this is a half note. What does it mean? Um, well, as I say, it doesn't mean it anything except in relationship to these other notes so that rhythm is all about a pulse a beat right like you know you think of a march one two one two one two one two or a waltz one two three one two three one two we're feeling a steady pulse throughout the piece it doesn't mean that there's a note that's getting played on every pulse it could, but that uh, it's it's not guaranteed. But it's that we feel this pulse throughout the piece, and we feel these beats. So we might feel a bigger pulse, and we might also break that down into smaller pulses and beats. And these note values then talk about how we can distinguish this pulse. So if we have a string of notes 
of the same note value, they get played, they each last the same amount of time, right? So if we had a string of whole notes, we might, you know, and the fact that this whole note doesn't say anything, it could be this fast, it could be this fast, doesn't matter. All that matters is they're going to be the same. They're, it's going to take you the same amount of time to get from one to the next. You'll feel the same pulse between each of these whole notes. A half note is, as you might expect, half of a whole note. So two half notes equal a whole note. So if we were feeling this pulse of a whole note, one, 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 and if instead we were to play some half notes, they would we would get two of them in the same amount of time. One, whole note, whole note, whole note, half note. A quarter note is you might expect is is equal to four whole notes. So in 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 the one time that we play this whole note, we would get. four quarter notes. Um, or, of course, two quarter notes per half note. If, if here are our half notes going along. We're hearing two quarter notes per half note. Um, it's all just math, right? The eighth note, there are eight eighth notes in a whole note. Uh, the, it always doubles, right? So that as we go down this chart, Two half notes equal a whole note. Two quarter notes equal a half note. Two eighth notes equal a quarter note. Two sixteenths equal an eighth. Two thirty seconds equal a sixteenth. So that's always something handy to remember as you're looking at rhythm. Um, so let's give you an example. Um, but before we do, let's talk about bars. And I don't mean bars where you buy drinks, but I mean bars in music. Much more exciting. And bars just break up a piece. They distinguish it rhythmically uh, in terms of what's happening. These are bar lines and these are bars. So here's a bar, here's another bar. This area between these two bar lines is a bar. And it contains a certain number of pulses. This, we'll use 4 4 here, is a time signature or, or the meter of the piece. And it tells us about the pulses. And if you remember fractions, this is exactly like that. The bottom number is the type of pulse. In this case, a fourth, a quarter note. So we would be probably counting quarter notes, feeling quarter note pulses. This top one is how many there are per bar. In this case, there are four. So one whole note or four quarter notes, but we're probably feeling the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, pulses per bar or for beats per bar. So here we can see this progression. Here's a whole note. It takes up the entire bar. Here's two half notes in the bar, four quarter notes, eight eighth notes, 16 sixteenths, and 32 30 seconds. Let's hear how it sounds. And remember, let's count. Try to count one, two, three, four per bar. One, two, three, Four, 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 one. So, as you could hear, there was the same amount of beat, same amount of beats in each bar. It's just the notes themselves that we were playing got steadily faster. Um, So what does that all mean? What, what, what do we do? Well, it means if we sat down to play this, we would, we could count, we could do that same thing. We could play this first note and we would count one, two, three, four. And now we get to this next bar. We're going to try to keep that steady one, two, three, four going and count one, two, three, four. And now one, two, three, four. Ah, what happens when we get here? Well, what we can do is we'll count one, 
and 2 and 3 and 4 and. But the important thing to remember is that the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 4 have to remain consistent. So if, if the danger is that we go from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, to 1 and 2 and 3, oops, these are the same speed then as these, and that's not what we want. So we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and 2, 3, 4, and. And when we're doing that, when we're learning the rhythm, we can kind of emphasize those beats, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and almost not even say the ands, so that we can, in our ear, we can hear that we're counting the remaining consistent from the 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. You can even tap your foot, or, or if you're just counting this, and not playing, you can clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and and listen for the claps, or just listen for the counts, and make sure that that beat is remaining steady, even though we're adding some notes in between the beat. When we come to these sixteenth notes, uh, one of the way there there are some different words you can say, but one of the ways to count them is we're going to try to remain consistent. So we're going to try to make a one we're going to try to make this one an and right because this is the second eighth note two of these equal an eighth note two sixteenths equal an eighth note so here's the first eighth note these first two and these two are we're going to count this one is and so we know already this is going to be one this is going to be and this is going to be two and this is going to be and and we'll count this is e and this is a uh, and e and a uh. So it will sound like one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a. Uh. And there are various, again, various ways to do this. Um, but by doing it that way, we have our, a separate sound for each group of four. Within each beat, remember the one, two, three, four, we have separate sounds for each, each note, for each rhythm point, for each sixteenth, uh, for each sixteenth beat. So if we were going from one, two, three, four, one and two, and three, and four, and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, um, so that's that's one way to count it. When we come to these thirty seconds, what would you do? Well, maybe you're able to feel the pulse. Maybe these are so fast, and, and you know if you're if you're doing maybe a group of four. Uh, so you might have, or maybe let's do maybe eight. You could just try to be feeling this one, two, three, four, and not even counting anything. If you wanted to count, though, you always have the option of just counting a different, a different pulse, right? So there's no we could just instead of counting uh quarters here we can count sixteenths if we want so it'll be you know one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and eleven and twelve and thirteen and fourteen and fifteen and sixteen and which would mean if we're counting the sixteenths if we were playing these we would we would go one we go one two three four five six seven Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We don't. We you know. We play one, two. We count pulse and not play three, four and count pulse. So again, it's all relative. It's all just math in how it works out. Um, but so if 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 we encounter a piece like a a, a random string of of notes. Um, we can again we're probably just going to be we don't have to but we're it's likely that the best plan will be to count the quarters so we would count one two and three four remember this is worth two quarters so we're counting four but not playing anything one two three and four and and there we go we we, we have that rhythm and again visually i think it looks that's about how we would play it you know this lasts 
these are slightly faster this lasts for maybe a little bit longer and then you know these and these are obviously faster well maybe not obviously i don't know it depends on the the notations uh, how it's set up as well like i guess these are getting jammed a little bit close together but anyway um so that's how you count these rhythms um that's pretty much all there is to rhythm but let me just talk about two important things one is dotted notes so so far all we've been able to do is double or or have i guess all we've been able to do is have a note value to make it twice as fast as is something that we've played before we have another option and that is to put a dot behind it uh, like this and that is it's called a dotted whatever type of note excuse me so this is a dotted quarter dotted eighth you know dotted half note etc there's not enough room in that bar for that um and what it does is it adds one half of the normal note value and i know that's how it can sound like whoa i didn't come here to do algebra i came here to play some music but um what it remember this if we get to our nice little chart right after quarter notes comes eighth notes so and always remember the next one down two of them are equal to one above it so two eighth notes equal a quarter and if we're adding a half of what a quarter normally is that means we're adding an extra eighth note to it and a quarter note is normally two eighths so this is going to be worth three eighth notes worth of time and let me give you an example of how this sounds oops that's a that's a dotted rhythm and what we would count that right is one two because nothing's happening on two this is slightly long remember if we're counting the eight the quarter note pulses um nothing's happening on two because this is one two and then this is happening on the and and it's a little easier to see though if we count the eighth note pulses right because this is, uh, what? Why is there nothing happening in two? Uh, so remember, each quarter note is worth two. So one, two, and then this additional one, three. So we're going to count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Um, so, or the one, two, and one two and one two and one sorry one two and three four and one two and three four and one um but again like it, it if you just count one two one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one that is a like a super easy way so if you if you encounter a dotted note start counting the pulse of the note uh the next note you know down the line the next fastest note right the the if so if you encounter a, a dotted uh eighth note count 16th notes and we don't always see a rhythm like this right we might see two dotted uh excuse me uh, two dotted notes in a row um in which case you know oops that would be what uh we're missing a few beats in there but we would we could count the 16th note pulse and we go we got one so let's actually uh let's add another eighth note in here uh there we go um we could we would count the 16th note pulse so one two three four five six one two one two three four one two three four here's how it sounds kind of weird right um where did that go to uh, 
but again, even though it's maybe not a, like a really me might encounter in, in a, most pieces, um, you can just count it out. We can just kind of do the math and, and, and figure out how it all works and how it all fits together. Um, there are also triplets or, or, or you know, uh, sometimes you'll see some notes with maybe a Sorry, what is this? Sh I don't know what the shortcut is. There's the, but there's the marker. Oops. Uh, I want a quarter. That's what I want. Oh, I see. I'm supposed to do this like that. Okay. Um, right this way. I can. Oh, I group it. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Um. And what it's saying is that if you see a little number above a group of notes, it's saying that it's there are that many of them, but they're only taking up the space of what what is left. Like in this case, they're only taking up three, and and with a triple, I mean, they're only taking up two. They're taking up two eighth notes. There's three eighth notes, but they're taking up two eighth notes worth of beat. So one and two and three and so we have to count the big pulse the one two three and it's going to be one two three two right one two three two three four one two three two three four one two three boom 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 um so it's just a way of letting you know that this is too many beats if we count this out one and two you know, or, or counting eighth notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine eighth notes. We can't fit nine eighth notes. We only have four eighths or eight, four fourths, four quarters or eight eighths. But it's saying that in fact, these three are taking up the space of two eighth notes. So um, just something to be aware of. You'll also of course encounter different meters. Um, Shoot, I can't think of what the shortcut is for that either, but there's the, okay. So a waltz is in three, four. Um, let's uh, do this. Where, you know, same thing, it's just we only have three beats, three quarters per bar. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, you might also encounter something that looks like this, uh, 6-8. Ooh, exciting. And, but, see, it, the only thing to know about 6-8 is it, same number of beats as a 3-4, right? We have 3 quarters, or 6 eighths, but... The pulse is slightly different. This is just something to, to know and be aware of. It's, it's not evident within the sort of the, the math of the bar, but three, four, we feel a pulse of these three quarter notes, right? We're feeling the quarter note pulse. One, two, three, one, two, three. With eighth, we feel the eighth note pulses, but in two groups of three. So um, uh, we'll, And you can see the way it was it's beamed it's grouping them into these two groups so that we get one two three four five six one two three four five six so within this bar we're feeling two big beats rather than three beats here we feel one two three with the quarter notes here we're kind of feeling dotted quarters one two three four five six one two three one so one two, and three one and three um so just something to be aware of uh, again i i think it'll be pretty evident in the music how it's supposed to feel and how the pulses are supposed to work Whew. um so oops am i turning this back on i think it went on and then it went off let's try turning it on again just want to say hi before i sign off okay there we go so uh, back in the picture 
yeah, hopefully that made sense. And um, as I say, it's a little nebulous rhythm. It's all in relationship to other notes. And hopefully this gives you enough information to start tackling pieces of music on your own. And uh, yeah, see you in a couple of weeks time. Cheers. <laughs>